August is wrapping up way different for some of you than maybe it normally does. And we're going to take a look at that in the video today. Also a bit of a preview at maybe some winter like patterns that we're starting to see set up. That'll be coming in just a moment. Here's what we're looking at now. We've got this huge upper low spinning just south of the Hudson Bay. There comes your cooler Canadian air dropping in from the north and northwest bringing temperatures down. However, across the west, we've got this upper high and it's just going to continue to bake across the far west, across the south, some heavy rain today across parts of South Carolina. We're going to dig into that today in the video. These these are temperature departures from average at about the 850 millibar level. A couple thousand feet up, the air isn't impacted by the warming and cooling of the day and the night. So you get a better idea of where the coldest air is. And we're looking at anomalies anywhere between 10 and 15 degrees below average. So that's what I'm talking about. This is a lot different than many of you have experienced in the past as we end August, which generally are sometimes just blistering hot and some of you breathing a sigh of relief. However, look how warm it is across the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures here, no relief. You're just going to be baking across parts of California, uh, into Idaho, Washington, Oregon. No relief here. Also into parts of the Canadian Rockies, really warm. We're taking that cool air and we're shoving it south into really the eastern side of the Rockies. That continues maybe even into next weekend. So this cool air may stick around for quite some time. And look, guys, you may warm up as we get into the first week of September or so. But to me, the pattern looks pretty interesting and we keep this northwest flow going. However, I think it does start to relax. And now you have to wonder, are we dealing with tropical systems sometime after the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and as we get toward the 20th of September. I think we are, and the upper level pattern starts to support that. The MGAO starts to move into a more favorable phase as we look at the long range outlook for what's happening in the tropics. You've got this disturbance here. That's moving to the west. The odds of that developing get kind of low as it moves into the Caribbean. The atmosphere not going to be as favorable for development. And then this system out here, it's going to be developing Bermuda right here. So that's the problem with this one. It's going to stay away from the lower 48. That's what we're watching the, in the Atlantic right now. Here's a look at the upper level pattern as we take a look really wide look here at what's going on across North America there's your cool pattern set up here from the northern plains all the way down I mean even though you're dealing with clouds and rain temperatures will be below average across parts of the south that continues through the weekend into the first part of next week if anything that cool air gets reinforced in that northwest flow across the west look at the ridging happening okay so underneath this not only is it going to be hot across the Pacific Northwest of the US up into British Columbia even into parts of Alaska However, once you get towards the North Slope, I've been talking about winter forecasting. I'll link down below kind of the outlook for the week. We do that every Tuesday. So if you're new, about half of you aren't subscribers, come back. We'll have an update again as we look at winter patterns as we head closer and closer to that seasonal change. But we're already starting to see some of that cold air build along the North Slope. And I've been talking about this for weeks, depending on how cold it gets, if you can delay some of that ice melt, which right now, that southern extent of ice is further south than it was last year. That could mean more cold air building. If you can keep it colder, keep that ice from melting as much, maybe you get a stronger polar vortex, which could lead to colder air locked around the Arctic, which technically could lead to maybe a warmer start to winter and then the dam just busts loose. But look, there's a long way to go before we get there. Overall, though, this is a pretty warm pattern, though, across the West. I don't see any changes here at least through the 2nd, 3rd, 4th of September, and then we start to see that ridge build back across the Southeast. Maybe eventually we'll see this ridge break down across the West, but that is really warm for the Northern Rockies, also the Canadian Rockies. And this type of pattern would keep the U.S. free of any hurricanes. And again, I think you look long range beyond this because as we get really far out, I'm going to take the European extended out. This is the weeklies. Anytime I post a long range, people are like, you're crazy. And you are looking at averages here. And once you get really beyond a week or so, right? It's all up in the air, but look what's happening around the Arctic. The models also pick up on the seasonal change. This is all baked into how they perform and it's getting colder. It's going to happen as we move into September. You know, this look right here tells me if you can get it cold across this part of the Arctic Sea, maybe you start an early freeze cycle for the ocean and that helps that cold air come over from Siberia. So that's where we are right now. More to come on that again later this week. All right, let's look at what's going on in the short term. We'll start with uh, today. We've got some severe weather possible across parts of Colorado, Wyoming. Otherwise, just a few scattered thunderstorms. We'll start here in the east because there is some heavy rain too possible as this low off the coast really cranks up. So there could be some heavy showers across Georgia, parts of Alabama into Tennessee today. I like this map because this kind of gives us an idea of where our surface pressures are, also our upper level height lines. And you can see that trough starting to swing through the Great Lakes, heights lowering, temperatures dropping, high pressure at the surface nudging in from the north your front moving through so there'll be a few showers out ahead of this and as this low moves up the east coast there could be some showers some gusty winds and then look at your trough building in in the upper levels okay so there's your trough axis there's your height lines your surface lines look 
just like this. That right there, guys, that's cool air advection moving in. So temperatures will be on the way down from the Ohio Valley. High pressure nudging all the way. Look at that, all the way into the deep south. So temperatures on the way down here. Question is, how far south does this front go? Looks like it's going to stall out along the Gulf Coast states. So the showers will be around. And I think this is an interesting look with this northwest flow, lake effect rain showers, maybe by Tuesday and Wednesday, just kind of showing you that unstable air and that cool air that's moving in. There's a look at your temperatures today, a, a mild start on Sunday morning and another hot day on the east side of this front. So places like Charleston, Huntington, back to Louisville, back to Little Rock, we're hot. Upper 80s, low 90s. Temperatures will be on the way down though. I'm going to push this out into Monday morning, 40s early uh, into parts of Wisconsin. High temperatures in the 60s and 70s. And then look, that cool air moves east. So Tuesday morning, it's been looking this way for the last seven days. And today, as we update, and when Tuesday's becoming closer and closer, we're looking at widespread 40s and 50s across a good chunk of Michigan. I mean, even parts of northern Wisconsin may get down into the low 40s with high temperatures barely getting out of the 60s. And look, we're cooling off even into the south with 70s and 80s versus 80s and 90s back across the west this is where it's hot and this is also where that moisture is trapped underneath that high notice when you get a low right your your winds will be they'd be spinning counterclockwise well underneath this high we've got a lot of moisture trap the monsoon season is underway and we're going to get quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity across the far southwest so some of this rain could be heavy there could be some gusty winds once we lose the heating of the day it calms down and then we could do it again tomorrow but look how this moisture is working pretty far north now we're pushing it all the way into parts of oregon that could be some relief to your heat but i would argue that yeah it's dry heat in the west but now you're adding a little bit of moisture that maybe you normally don't see so it's starting to feel a little bit sticky across this area not only is it hot so yeah, a little miserable at times with high temperatures today. Triple digits again in the valleys, all the way into Idaho, Oregon, Northern California. It's just going to be baking here, and it's always hot across the far southwest. No changes here, and unfortunately, it is going to stay hot across the west. Back into the central U.S. we go. High pressure nudging in here. We're going to continue to see that happen as we move through Saturday, also into Sunday. Maybe a few showers across parts of Kansas. Otherwise, we'll keep these showers across the Rockies. Mostly dry, though, here across the central plains, into the Ohio Valley, the Mid-South, the Northern Plains, uh, also into the upper Midwest. A few showers again into Oklahoma as we move into Monday, but otherwise, high pressure at the surface here with all this sinking air, with this trough building in. We're looking at relatively dry and cool weather, at least through Tuesday across this part of the country. Here's a look at your highs today, at least as we head into the afternoon, your afternoon temperatures. There's the cool air across Minnesota, North Dakota, dropping south into Iowa, even into Missouri. We'll start to feel that as we head into Sunday with low temperatures dropping back into the upper 50s, maybe even the lower 50s into northern parts of Missouri, over into Illinois, so Indianapolis, all the way even to Chicago. We're looking at some cool temperatures heading into Tuesday morning and high temperatures pretty nice too, even into the Southern Plains. I mean, Oklahoma, North Texas into Arkansas, we may be stuck in the clouds, but we're in the 60s and 70s. So some big changes on the way across this part of the country. And again, we've looked at that long range outlook, kind of how things are shaping up over the next couple of weeks. More to come on this.